Greetings, fellow Empyreans. I am Ashtarothy, and this is the Eve Universe Show. We are coming live this Monday. It is a special Day Zero show. Uh, I do want to talk about the future of this show and what it's going to be, what our scope is, and what my goals are. Uh, but I also have a good sample of the kind of things that we're going to talk about. I actually have Drake Idon here for uh, an interview about Poshvin and what's been going on there. Uh, he's got some in interesting information for everybody. So I will talk more about what we're going to be doing for the rest of this week and the rest of this for like for this show. After that, let's without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with our interview. I will be uh, running some missions in the background in my Paladin, hopefully, just for some fun visuals. Without further ado, Drake Idon, how are you? I'm very good and welcome. Um, congratulations on your first uh, episode of your new podcast. Yeah, yeah, it's a uh, you know, got you gotta you gotta knock the bugs out, gotta get some time to get all the errors going, you know, out of the way. I got some coffee, but I didn't have time to actually make it right, so it's black and it's super hot, and I almost burned myself right beforehand. But you know, we gotta work the kinks out before the rest of the week. But uh, that's enough about me. Who are you? Why don't you tell everybody like uh, what's your Eve story first of all? Oh, well, I only came back to Eve about nine-ish months ago. Um, I, I basically won Eve for seven years. I went to university and um, got, you know, got my foot on the corporate ladder and things like that. And I decided with um, Eve Echoes coming out, I was like, oh man, I missed this game. And I came back and um, it's kind of how I ran into you um, because the new um, Poshvin was just starting right. um, the end of the invasion. So I kind of started out there. But um, I grinded my way up to 7.0 standings with the uh, exploit, shall we say, with the drones. And then uh, CCP quite rightly nuked them all. And I was like, oh, I can't, I can't go through all that grind again for now. So I started doing my own thing. Um, but I always wanted to come back to Poshvin. And um, as luck would have it, the, um, my CEO, Beta Page, my now CEO, wanted me to come back. So I said, right, I'm going to do this the Grand Prix event, which was last month. I won that, oh, which is a load of fun, stargate. and came back to Padre, and now I'm living there full-time. Loving it. Well, awesome. So so let's get this straight. You didn't take part in Invasions Chapter 1 or 2, or even Chapter 3. You basically showed up once everything was done, Poshvin was formed, um, and, and, and have only seen it from that perspective. Is that correct? Almost, yeah. I Right at the end of uh, Chapter 3, I did a very small amount of invasion content, and then um, the 27th system was taken, and then um, Poshvin started to form. So it was around that time. So have you lived in Poshvin the entire time since it's been, like, a thing? Um, or... I lived for the first week and a half, and then CCP nerfed the, um, the standings. Right. Uh, so then I... Like, I just couldn't, for the life of me, bring it to do the grind again. So um, I went back and did some low second wormhole stuff. I joined Wingspan for a bit, which was quite fun. Okay, um, so during that time, you did no uh, Poshvin. You didn't even go through wormholes or anything like that. You were just like, I, no, I, I took all my standings, for, I'm done. Um, yeah, pretty much. But outside of um, using Poshvin, I've got a, um, some Black Ops um, dotted around. So I used to come in to just use the Black Ops to bridge on top of stuff. But that was about it, really, before I came and redid the grind. Okay. All right. So what? And then that was after the the Federation Grand Prix. So that's within the last month or so, right? Yep. Okay. So what did you find when you, once you actually moved into Poshvin? What did you find the state of Poshvin to be in? At the start, when the is is Poshvin is a really weird place. Is if you don't have any standings to use the gates. It feels completely barren. You rarely see anyone else unless you're lucky or unlucky enough to be in um, the staging systems for the main alliances, which is uh, Kino and Wirashoda. But outside there, it generally feels like no one's there. And as soon as you hit that 1.0 standing barrier to get the border system, suddenly you start seeing more people. Then you hit 3.0 and you realize, oh, there's loads of people here, which is kind of cool. Okay, and and are you actually part of one, any of the like Poshvin groups or anything? Have you been part of Kybernauts or or, or uh, Strybog or any of the other groups? Um, I was in Kybernauts at the start of the formation of Poshvin, um, and they then wanted to kick people—not kick people—they wanted to move people to a training corp. 
right. so they could get their 4.0 corp standings to get offices. And that was the point where I just said, you know, it's been fun, guys, but I'm going to chill for a bit. And then that's when I left them. I, can, I understand. I can understand how that would, uh, you know, be embittering. It was it was kind of an interesting moment um, because, as you pointed out, there are there is a certain benefit that can only you only get if your entire corporation has an average standings above 4.0. And so yeah. Kybernauts, uh, especially when they split away from from me and uh, my leadership uh, and all that stuff completely, one of the very first things that they decided was to split the corp to make it so that that way, as you mentioned, they could get that uh, additional access. But it didn't really feel great to be one of those people, uh, for sure. So so now that you're back, you didn't have any intent to join one of those pre-existing uh, groups. How, how have you found living in Poshfin without being part of the, the blocks, as it were? It, it it's surprisingly easy. So um, I, I did look to go back to Kybernauts, but um, my friend, the great taxman Beta Page, the inventor of crab sliding, which we'll get to a bit later, he he's been pestering me to come back and come back. So I said, right, fine, you know, I'll, I'll join with you. And um, we're basically like shoot on sight because we're essentially just neutrals. But some people have us red, so everyone's out to get us as you would expect. But it's the main threat here if you know how to avoid them isn't the players it's just all the rats because it's a 24 7. i can only describe it as like an npc thunderdome <laughs> that just never stops <laughs> okay so uh how how profitable is your life in Poshman? um half a trillion a month good it's night between <laughs> it's not just me that's split between say Including alts, I what? would say nine, ten people, nine, ten characters. Oh, okay, H how? So, so should we get into the the crab sliding? Oh, oh, oh okay, so okay, okay, <laughs> yeah, 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 no, I, I mean, okay, so, so, but I mean, just like without, without, without the the secret squirrel stuff that we're going to talk about in a few seconds, but like, just if when you moved into Poshfin at first, like, and you were just trying to feel it out, like, get, looting the, the rats or the wrecks or anything like that, how how profitable, how how lucrative did you find Poshfin? Uh, well, I didn't really loot anything the second time I came in, but when I was in with Kybernos, it's like, for a new character or someone new to Poshfin, it's pretty profitable. You can, there's loads of T2 ships to salvage from all the Eden Com stuff. There's all the, um, the interstellar navigation logs, which you can use the LP store from. You right. can buy books and all things from that. Um, there's also Zoya rats that appear so often. They can drop, I, we call them eggs. They're um, a car rat they're called Semiosis something, but they sell for like 40 mil a pop. So like a salvager can run in here, like with a cloak and just a destroyer and make good isk for the SP requirement, really. It's been, I guess, because quite a lot of people do it, I see. Um, they do die quite a lot, but you know the ent the barrier to entry isn't that high, all things considered. So you you mentioned Zorias. Um, there has actually been a lot of question about whether or not Zorias still spawn. So you're saying that, that, that there are Zorias that are spawning outside of uh, outside of um, what's it called? Outside uh, of the the anomaly, the flashpoint. So they yeah, don't outside spawn the flashpoint. outside of there. The, oh, okay. Um, yeah, so liminals can spawn outside, but it's kind of rare. I don't quite understand what makes them do it. But um, mainly, it's the, outside of all the anomalies and things like that, it's just going to be the Eden Comrats, the drones, the drone um, super carrier, and then the drifters who, if you if they see you, you're generally going to die straight away. But, you know, <laughs> that's I, how it goes. I found farming those things to be incredibly inefficient or hard to get like uh, enough to to go for a while. Uh, do you find any of those sites like consistent enough content to live off of or work with? If you're doing it as a main income source, I would say probably not. It depends how much you're expecting to make. Um, like if you're a new player, I would say if you if because it's a very risky area, especially if you're new to the game or you're low SP or in. in you know, just salvaging. But if you're if you're comparing it to outside income, like salvaging in high sec or low on null or wormhole space, like it's it's pretty good, and I would actually recommend it just so more people come here because it's it's really weird to describe Podshrin just that it's it's the comfiest place in Eve. 
Like it's this little area where everyone else, and it is like the most brutal space I've I've, re- I've come to realize just because everything wants you dead and the servers also seem to disconnect you more here, for, at least for me. But uh, but it's just, it's, a, it's like a new skybox. It's, it's like you're playing Eve fresh again when you've just undocked as a, you know, a brand new capsule here. Like, I, I love it here. I can definitely see the uh, the reason why. Uh, that does sound really cool. But uh, so okay, we I think we've I think we've beat around the bush for long enough. You you mentioned a very large amount of money. Clearly, somebody is making more than just what these drone sites are doing. So so how are the big players making money in Poshvin? So the there are two types of sites that spawn in Poshvin. One is the World Arc Flashpoint, which is if you're anti-trig and pro Eden Com, that was the thing you went to and you uh, tried to kill the World Arc and it eventually would run away and you get loads of loads of ISK. The other more, and it seems to be that spawns once every so often in Poshvin and no one really ever clears it because only one, um, shall we say team, even though it's just one guy with loads of alts was doing it. The other one, which pays slightly less, but is always going. There are three sites in Poshvin at any one time. They're called um, Observatory Flashpoints, which is the pro triglavian anti eden Com site. And the general gist of it is you walk to Dead Space Pocket, there's a fight outside, um, Triglavians come and help you, you kill eden Com, then Triglavians say, yep, go through this um, acceleration gate, and there's a big Concord um, outpost there, which is supposed to be monitoring the sun and finding out why the Edencom are changing it to a different color. Right. And you kill a load of very high intensity rats there. You like exalted um, Amarian battleships and stuff, which have seem to have infinite tracking and infinite range, which is kind of bullshit, but <laughs> it's it is what it is. Um, eventually, a dread will spawn and occasionally one shot someone in the fleet. You would kill that, and then a a Zinetra, the Triglavian Dreadnought, would warp in, and would help you kill the tower. It's basically like a very fast pos ba- posh ba- pos bash. Right, and so for anybody um, who's familiar with it, it is the the Dread site basically from Chapter Two and Chapter Three, but the difference is is that now you can't like select which one you're going to be doing. The one inside of Poshvin is always anti Amar. And the one in, outside of Poshvin is always anti-trig, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know why it was doing it, but it seems to be um, people are quite happy with it when they're running it. Because if I recall, the Galente one was the worst because the Morris tracking was like twice that of the Revelation. It was something like that. Well, I do remember that the easiest was definitely the Kaldari one because the missiles could be sig, sig tanked pretty effectively. Oh yeah, I remember the uh, bomber fleet people talked about to do that really cheaply. I am, I am getting a note from chat uh, that the World Arc is currently bugged uh, from Ke- Keko Ban member. So that may be a big reason why as well. Uh, that's unfortunate. That, that might explain why the group who did run that, we called him Gollum Guy because he used like 20 Golems, which is kind of crazy. He used to run them and we tried to figure out how to, uh, shall we say, uh, take back some of his stuff for good old Zoya. But um, he then stopped and started doing the flashpoints. So if that's bugged, then maybe that's why. We've never really been able to science that one out. Okay. And then also, so the more dangerous the sites were in, this, the system the sites were in, the more they paid out. So so what does the payout for the flashpoints look like? Um, they are all the, they're all based on the amount of um, people in the site, and because all space in Poshvin is minus one point the payout the table is the same. Right. So, so but, 50, but my point is, how much people is in? Uh, so now, uh, let me get my graph. So the optimal way of doing it is having fifteen people, and that's two hundred thirty-six mil per person, Ooh. which is around three and a half bill per site. There's also the dread also drops an item which you get a Zinertra blueprint cache at the end of it, which can drop anywhere between lowest I've had is 200 mil and highest is about 900 mil of uh, items. Right, because that's where the the blueprint uh, blueprints to build Zinetras come from. You get a random blueprint copy 
right? It used it used to be. It's changed. So oh. now it doesn't drop any blueprints. It only drops um, vessel hog co- vessel. Oh, sorry, vessel core holograms. Um, up to fifty thousand um, navigation logs, and then it has a chance of dropping ammo blueprints, um, XL ammo blueprints for the dread, the dread gun skill book, or the dread skill book itself. And the way you get the blueprints now is you go to a station and use those core holograms and right. navigation logs to get the blueprints themselves and the items, like the components, to build it. So rather than giving you a random one, they just give you the thing to go buy whichever one you want. Pretty much, yeah. It's yeah. it's there's still some randomness in it because the lowest we had was like I think it was three holograms and twenty thousand logs, and the highest we had was a dread book, fifty thousand logs and five holograms, which it seems to be the highest possible, which is about 900 mil. For the record, I hate this mission. (laughs) Uh, So, okay, cool. Um, Okay, so if you have 15 people, it's like 250 million isk each, just in payout alone. Then there's also loot potential. Okay, cool. Yep, and there's also another, there's probably about another 300 mil of salvage and loot in the site themselves, but no one does it because it's faster to just go to the next one. Like it's a lot more profitable. That's right. that's the money we're talking where you you could just casually leave behind 300 mil and not care. So anybody who knows about that could capitalize on that by by having the site identified, and then as soon as the people leave, you could go in and just squirrel all that stuff away, right? Yep. The uh, only issue is the wrecks seem to despawn when the site despawns and everyone's off grid. It's not like normal dead space because I tried to go back and salvage on an alt and every time I tried it disappeared and I don't quite understand why it's doing it. Uh, okay. But you can you can, cert- you can certainly get in and cloak up and wait. Right. That's but, fair. Uh, it's, yeah, it, it's, it's kind of weird. Posturing is just a weird place. Like, things don't work here. Okay, so, but you have figured out a way to get your own payout from these sites. Why don't you talk about that a little bit? Well, it's it's the best sport in Poshfin. It's the number one sport. Everyone loves it, except uh, Stribble, Clay, Kybernauts, and the Russians mainly, and Goons, because they're the ones running the sites all the time. But um, I can't take credit for it. Beta Page is the one that did it. He used to do it during the invasion content, which mm-hmm. is how we knew about it. And he basically applied the same fundamentals to um, Poshfin when he realized these sites are still here. The general gist of it is these sites um, are the same as the invasion ones, aside from it always being a Mar, and it pays out to the top 70 people who have contributed. And contributing can be anything. It can be repping someone who's damaged. It could be um, it could be killing a, a ship. It could be doing you know quite a lot of stuff. So we thought, let's sign this this out. And it basically boils down to, you need to do damage to something in the site, and you have to be on grid when the site ends, which is when the tower dies. You can't be cloaked for it because it tells you off, but that's, that's pretty much it. Do some damage, get a payout. Okay, so you're going into other people running the site and tagging yep. it and then getting paid out. Yep, which in turn reduces their payouts, which is why we ended up calling it uh, taxing the locals. All right, all right. We are, so. we, we are lawyers, merry taxmen, and you cannot stop the taxmen. So we have some emergent gameplay. Um, what? Don't they? Don't they just kill you, or or hold they, aggro they, long they, enough they to let the rats kill you? They certainly try, and the rats. The most the most deadly thing in there is the rats for us because. Um, the rats can insta lock and the players can't. So like you can really get fucked over by the rats. I um was running around in plus fives like for the first week I was in here. And then I thought, oh I'll you know, I'll swap out because at some point I'll get podded by someone and it's like that's a half built kill mail I don't really want. <laughs> and um the very next day, um I immediately got one shot as soon as I landed on grid and before I even loaded my pod I was back in G turn. I was like, ah fuck me then. <laughs> Like it can happen. Like, yeah, just every everything. It was it's even not as bad as it used to be because in the first few few weeks of Podge forming, everything insta locked you. 
like yep. it could like the um the drifter battleships you know, they locked you the moment you decloaked off a gate like you were there's nothing you could do you were just dead okay all right so so you go into these sites you hope the rats don't kill you then they have yeah. to finish the site because otherwise they just nobody nobody gets paid and they probably enough of them are scrammed that they can't just leave the site so how how many people do you bring in we originally started with just one or two because uh -huh. we we understood from the get-go like we can really be dicks about this and bring in as many alts as possible the limiting factors were we knew it people would just stop ratting like if they're not like they're not happy with us taking their money anyway mm -hmm. but imagine if we tax them not only are we getting more and more of the percentage payouts because we've got more and more people there but the overall payout per pilot is going down and down and down and down right as we do it you're, so, steal you're, you're straight up stealing yeah. from them for sure yeah exactly yeah well no we're taxing them it's 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 like a it's like a posh and wide corporation tax. Tax taxation Not without kidding. representation is theft, my friend. It, no, there's representation. They can tell us that they're unhappy. Okay, we can just ignore them. <laughs> but um, so we where, need. Where, where can Strybog send their delegate? Uh, we, well, they're they're already in our Discord. They, they like to brag. They like to brag how they've got spies in here, but for some reason, it doesn't seem to affect affect us. Our taxing abilities. Um, but from the get go, we knew. If we milk this too hard straight away, people will just stop. Right. Which so we basically just kept a lowish profile. We shit posting local every so often. I made like some meme videos about it. Um but we just kind of did one, maybe two a site and just built up from there and built up from there. And um the March um economical report just came out and it finally includes Podfrin. And uh -huh. there's some there's yeah, there's quite a lot of people debating saying no, that's not posh and that's other stuff. Like no, that is I, ninety. I, like I ninety five percent of that is posh friend. So I did some homework, uh, and I I talked to a pe people that I know, people that are running uh, the invasion sites for Pro Edencom and K Space, etc. We did t he did uh, I did find out that there is quite a bit of site running going on in HiSec that does have payouts, but he estimated that as maybe maybe being like half a billion in a month which leaves yeah all, all over two and a half billion of unaccounted for uh payouts that basically is poshfin feeding these guys you, you uh you're a thousand you said billion it's actually trillion <laughs> but yeah, yeah sorry so, 2.5 2. trillion you're right you're right 2.5 trillion yeah. it's it's a hard number to process <laughs> um yeah so there are there are still sites out in k space the issue is they don't spawn. Uh, they as uh, how to explain it because I'm shit at words. They don't spawn in the same place and they don't spawn straight away in case right. space. In Poshvan, there is always three. When one finishes, another one has just popped up. So right. you, you can just keep going and going and going. There's no limit to it. Yeah, and that's that's technically true about the other ones, but there's also like you, there's two, there's space between them. In Poshvan, yeah. there's the twenty seven systems space. and they're all chained together. Yeah, and they can also spawn in the same system. We gen we usually get like two in the same system. I've never seen three in the same system though. Awesome! I just did that cool thing where you don't actually accept mission. <laughs> oh, I, it's been a I've long time since I've done missions. I've yeah. not done level fours in a while. I when I came back to the game last year, I did like two level fours, and I was like, right, this is boring. Then I bought a Vindicator and went and did uh, incursions, and I spent an hour there, and I was like, right, this is boring. <laughs> just went elsewhere. Okay, so... Why are we Why are we talking about this now? Why, why did you finally agree to come on to the show and talk about this? We've made our money, and we also... No, we actually wanted to get the word out anyway, because for us... It wasn't really about the money. It was at the start because we realized, oh yeah, it was about sending a message. It. Yeah, kind of. It, it was making bank. We were making bank from it, but then the locals started getting very, like, they obviously weren't happy, and there was a really fun back and forth where they would start trying to counter us, and we would change our fits and our methods to counter those counters. So the, for example, the Russian ones um, recently, the Russian. Um, 
uh, site runners have started using speed uh, drone speed rigged Ishtars to catch us with warriors but it's ultimately not stopping us getting the tax. They also had 500 Mega Newton Vagabonds to beat us in a straight line, but manual piloting gets around that. So there's always like a arms race in Fitz, which was really fun. It's kind of died down now, but back then it was like every day there was something new, which was kind of cool. I just realized something because so you're chasing around them all day in Poshfin, which means you need to have 3.0 standings as well in order to get around. But the dread site is one of the best ways to get standings, isn't it? So you're also like if somebody happens to be 1.0 or something like that and they manage to get in on one or two of these dread sites, that's probably one of the best ways to unlock Poshvin for you as well, wouldn't it be? If if you can get on the site when you're not 3.0 and you can get tagged on like a battleship or the tower or the dread itself. If you tag on the dread, that's amazing. Um but for for me, I just gra- I spent three days just like no life grinding to uh, three point I started in a border system. I killed an Eden com. I killed a drifter. I killed a drone. I docked up. Twenty minutes later, I did the same thing again. When I hit one point I did it across two systems, and eventually I hit three point Right. That was how I did it. I um. But when I finally got three point I was trying to not lose any more Eden com standings, just because if I go back to K space, um. I want to eventually like grind that back up without it taking too long. I so know at I least was, one person that I has was... 3.0 with Kyber with a uh, with Trig and positive with Edencom, and let me tell you that is that is slick. Yeah, I know one one of our uh, taxes, one of our junior taxes, shall we say, has a uh, 5.0 with Trigs and four with Edencom, and um, I showed him my ways of not losing standings while tagging into these. The main thing is, people don't shoot the deacons because they don't rep enough and they don't do enough damage for you to care. So if you shoot them, they never die. <laughs> they rarely die. So you don't get a standings loss and you get the payouts. That was that was how I did it. But then eventually I hit like two point, minus 2.0 Eden I was like, right, I can't be bothered. I'm just going to shoot everything. So I'm now on minus five. So uh, you, you mentioned that like, Doing this would reduce their, you know, desire to do it and would cause them to change their behavior. Um, I remember you mentioned before, or somebody was mentioning beforehand, I believe, that that this has basically happened at this point. Uh, Where, say again, sorry? Have, has, have people continued to run the sites or has, has the amount of far- people coming and, and taxing them impacted the amount of sites that are actually being ran? Up until the last week, I would have said no. But now, um, one of the people that was running the sites has eventually... He's he's basically just given up because the method of what he was running the sites, we could tax him extra. We were also stealing the loot from the Dread. So we were taking that extra 900 mil. And he seems to now be sick of it and he's now taxing people. And that has kind of got us over like a critical mass in the past, say, three days people haven't really been running it. They come out and run it, and they realize how much they're getting taxed by all these people, and they just give up. So an example is the one I told you before. The um, I think it was the Russians, and normally they would expect between 290 mil to 189 mil, depending on taxes, they're now getting 50 mil a site, and they just thought it's not worth it. Well, uh... We do have a lot of Strybog people in chat, a, a growing number, if you want to s- say hi to them or uh, if you have any messages for them. I will say that uh, they, they were complaining earlier about your your, the, your conduct in local. So uh, keep it clean that, here. So that, that, that's, not, that's not me. That was a... I know exactly what it was, and I actually agree with them. Um, yeah, Beta did go a bit too far there, and you guys reported it. He did get an account warning, so... And he says... He even agreed, yeah, I went too far there. He basically said... Um, well, he just without even quoting you, he basically compared Stribolg to uh, cotton fields and the people that used to frequent them against their will. So this, so, yeah. so this last week, there's been a lot so, less sites being ran. Uh, does that impact your money? Do you have any plans for the future? Do you think this is going to be a trend? Um, I think, I think it will be coming waves where 
all these people will come and tax. Eventually, no one will run the site. The taxes disappear. Then the sites will start getting run again. So it's it's gonna it's always gonna be here. Um, I don't think it's gonna disappear because it, CCP seem content to not change posturing for now. But I think I think eventually these sites will disappear because law wise, I don't really understand um, why they're still here because it's invasion content. It's not post invasion content, if you know what I mean. I suppose, although. Um... There, there is still things going on. Like, uh, this is representing effort by Edencom, you know, all that sort of stuff. There is lore that has come out about each of the Poshvin systems and uh, Edencom and the various empires' interest in rescuing the people in them, for example. Uh, you know, there's different... There are lots of inhabited planets that are stuck in Poshvin. So the, the empires definitely have interest in Poshvin. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm not saying they don't have interest. It's just that these sites in particular, why would you uh, put out a um, observatory to try and understand what the end game of the sun harvesting is when it's already been realized? Why would the Triggs put mm. out a world arc for testing when it's already been tested? If new things come out to say like, help Eden come evacuate people from a planet or things like that, or scouts, to see what's going to happen with the other the, the other um, unactivated gate in the home systems. Like, that's new content. I'm all for that. It's just that these particular ones... I see what you're like, saying. They're, 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 they're in a buggy state because they're all Lamarian. There's there's no... I can't fathom why these people think there's three of them running at any one time. Especially yeah. with these girls. It just... It seems excessive. Maybe, maybe CCP want this in. I think it's just like an afterthought. Kind it feels like a stopgap. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, like, oh, well, we need to have this content still. We've already built the levels. So, you know, let's just have that be the thing that fills it up. Uh, like a stopgap maneuver rather than have make all new unique sites for Poshvin is what you're trying to say, right? Is that yes. about right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's about, that's about the gist of it. That sounds fair. Um, one second. There we go. Uh, okay, cool. Well, uh, anything else about your experiences in Poshfin or about life in Poshfin right now that we should talk about? Um, aside from the, gra the the main thing is, I would say to anyone, like, for some reason, the Eve community at large outside of Poshfin seems to think that Poshfin is empty, barren. It's this half assed attempt by CCP to bring something new into the game. And they left it. But Poshfin's honestly a great place to live. The only thing is, like, that 3.0 standings issue is like a it's a big barrier to entry but i would just say you know get get the grind in and get it done you can do it i did it in a tengu you could do it in a jackdaw most people do it in nagas but once you've done it you're always what three to five jumps from jeter if you want to from any point in the game there and are definite there's always, advantages there's always content, yeah there's always content here because there's quite a lot of people with the um with the main alliances, so there's the Russian alliance of, um, ah, the, um, the convocation, the Triglavian unity, the three glad they're the Russians, there's Kybernauts and Stribolg, uh, there's the convocation of Imperians, and there's, um, and goons are, I don't know if they're fully moving in here, but there are a lot of goons in we showed at constantly grinding standings. They used to run sites and now they've not, I'm not really sure what's happening with them. So, uh, you are planning on staying in Poshvin, and you live in the NPC structures. You're not, you're not associated with any of the main groups. Are, so your how many how many how big is your group? Um, the main the core group is four people. There's four me, people. Beta, yeah, me, Beta, Thea, and Nex. And then there's um, there's a lot of other people that aren't directly tied to our core Castle Kickers, um, but they joining on the fun basically they saw what we're doing they're like oh that's cool let's get in on that and we kind of like said yeah sure coming in huh okay so and then so your four people have made how much in the last how much and how long so in so i worked because because i'm a nerdy accountant by trade i once the um the march um economic report came i was like i need to know how much percentage we did and i figured out between our alts 
both in and out of the um because uh, we have some in Stribog as well, just running the sites every so often, but we also have the taxes as well. We, I think we're in between 280 and 340 billion esque in just March. And we've got about maybe half of that, slightly more than half of that in April because it slowed down quite a lot. That is crazy. Yeah, the ESC the here is crazy. And and also think about this, those Strib Stribog and... So we've always had arguments with Stribog because, you know, we rile them up and they're either they're trying to rile up us or they're upset about it because we are stealing their money. Like, we're taxing them, there's no way about it. Like, they're yeah. making more money than us. Oh, absolutely. In fact, and, actually, yeah. in, in chat, they're like, only 300 billion, ha ha ha. So, I mean, like, clearly. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, like, like, think about it. Like, they're it okay. 3.1 trillion. Yeah, it's 3.1 trillion. Let's say the upper end of my estimation is correct for 300 and, 350 billion. Mm -hmm. That rest of it is going to these alliances, basically. Like, I'm, I've never denied that they're making more money. Like, the money in here, that's why everyone kept it quiet. Every time you go on Reddit, when people ask about Poshvin, all the... Um, all the comments saying, oh, Poshman's empty, blah, blah, blah. They're always getting upvoted. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's us and Stribog. Like, we keep upvoting them just to keep people out of the loop. I've started actually saying to people, like, yeah, come here, because I want more people here. So uh, I'm seeing two basic complaints uh, in chat. One is the, the behavior of those people in chat or in local, which we've already addressed. Um, but the other one is that what you were doing is a exploit. Do you? Have, what would you say to that accusation? We put in a ticket to the GMs when we first started this back in the um, chapter three of invasions, and they said no, that's fine, and their stance hasn't changed. That's that's all I can say to that. Um, and in terms of the thing in local, like I agree with you. He shouldn't have said that. Take it up with him. He's not me. We we don't we're not alts of each other for some reason. People seem to think I'm beta page. I'm not. Take it up with him. That's fair enough. All right. Well, uh, unless you got something else, I think that that probably about does it for today. We just wanted to check in on Poshvin and talk about what kind of stuff is going on. Uh, clearly, this is a contentious topic uh, and uh, something that I would love to explore uh, deeper as we go forward. Um, well, yeah, uh, but I'll, I'll still be around and I want to say to everyone else, like, Poshrin is a great place to stay. There's, even if you join Kyber or Stribolg, if you want to be in what I call the blue, the blue donut, the blue triangle, go ahead. Like, they're not terrible people. I've never had an issue with them, really. Like, we're just at odds with each other because of, you know, what we do, taxing. If you if that's your entry to enter um, Poshvin, go ahead. If you want to grind and join us and be unaffiliated, you know, we're, we're welcome with open arms. All right. Well, thank you very much for that. Uh, I will. Um, what we'll do is we will take this interview and make sure to put it on the YouTube so that way people can, can talk about it. And if anybody has uh, their own perspective on Poshfin or other forms of gameplay it would be happy to have you on here. We want to focus on the different ways that people play and experience EVE Online and its universe. So uh, thank you very much for coming on. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. Let me do one more mission. Uh, yeah, I would love to have... Uh, somebody from Strybog on. Um, in fact, uh, so I'll, I'm going to be talking about this more as we, uh, for the rest of the day, but um, I will be doing CSM interviews. And from my understanding, Maldavius is running for CSM. So I was already going to reach out to him about that uh, to make sure, to see whether or not he uh, wanted a, uh, an interview for that. Um, but it's it's completely up to them whether or not they want to come on and speak. <laughs> oh yeah, Zenuria uh, is running it again too. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. So okay, so the way it works is that uh, the Eve Universe podcast is going to have, or the Eve Universe show, I should say, will have two for sure episodes every week. 
Every Tuesday, I will have an episode in which we aim to, to answer the question of what changed this week. So tomorrow, for example, we will be looking at all of the changes of the full industry patch um, and you know anything else that changes that, that, that we that comes up in tomorrow's patch. And then on Friday, we will strive to answer the question, what is there to do this weekend? Uh, I really want this show to be a way for us to talk and, sh and show stuff about EVE Online, it's, it, the universe, etc., without necessarily having a nullsec block focus, right? I'm not so interested in the politics or who's winning what war or anything like that. Uh, I am interested in how null, nullsec events impact things like the market or whatnot. But from my perspective, you know, null blocks have good sources of communication, good streams of communication, and therefore members of null blocks have ways of staying informed and getting the instructions or, you know, the, the, the direction that they need. So this show is for people that aren't necessarily part of that. EVE players that, that need to know how what's happening uh, impacts them. That this, so this is to put, as I've said many, many times before, but even the context for my fellow Empyreans. Um, 